we are at the doorstep of the future. Um, we are experimenting now with uh, certain uh, systems. Um, and experimentation is a first step before we can integrate those capabilities into, for instance, a maritime uh, task group. Um, so I think we are at the beginning of a, uh, a long journey uh, where we will see uh, the unmanned systems mixing with traditional uh, assets into uh, perhaps uh, even an, uh, an unmanned uh, future. It's clear that in the future, unmanned systems are going to be a very important part of the Alliance's capabilities. It's truly impressive to see the different technologies that the nations bring and how they send their finest, brightest and most motivated people as we work towards the future of unmanned systems. We uh, start to see uh, this disalignment between the industry, what they are producing and what NATO needs. And that's the reason we need to grab them to work together with us in order to align what are, are our intentions and also to see what are the, their developments and to have this alignment, uh, to have a better products not only for uh, the, um, on the military perspective, but also for the civilian perspective. That's the reason we have Rep News. Rep News is also to develop civil, uh, civil um, in systems and technologies. As we walk around, we see all sorts of different machinery. But, but on top of that, there's also a lot that we don't see. There's a lot of uh, artificial intelligence, there's a lot of machine learning, there's a lot of sensing, there's a lot of new ways of perceiving the environment. There's a little bit more detached from, from what we can see happening, but, but that, that both what we see, both what we don't see, definitely is shaping what the future of, uh, of maritime operations will, uh, will look like. I think we have, we have two advantages that unmanned systems. First, we can send them places that are too risky to actually send a manned asset. So if we need to put somebody far forward or in an engagement zone where they might get return fire upon or might be in a hazardous environment, we certainly want to push those, those assets and those details to the unmanned system. But at the greater capacity for a smaller price point where a small quadcopter or a small USV could actually create the same level of, of ISR or, or surveillance capability of a, of a manned asset. I2I stands for interoperable to interchangeable. So it's always been, or at least for a very long time, it's been understood the value of our systems being able to interoperate. Um, and, and that remains to be extremely important and is something that we continue to work to you know, improve on uh, daily. The interchangeability piece takes it a step further. So not only are our systems interoperating, um, but in some cases, when need be, we are able to interchange them. Well, if you leave scientists to scientists, they will produce papers. But we need equipment and we need procedures. And by having the operators and the industry and academia in one place, they can actually streamline their efforts to focus, to provide the warfighter equipment that he can actually be efficient and effective. 